So I'll right click once again, say create a new 3D animation, and I will once again say file new. So we've covered the kind of the solid objects. Let me cover some curves as well. The Beyond has the capability of generating curves. These are really flat, sort of like the normal stuff that we do in laser, just, just basically a line. The first curve I'm going to click is this one, circle, enable laser output. And it may not look very impressive that we can add a circle, that we can create a circle. We could do that with our normal program. What's the big deal? Why would we want to do that with a 3D program? Well, the neat thing about curves is that we can use them to do something else with. So for example, what I'll do is come over here into surfaces add a teapot to the scene. So now we have both a teapot and that circle. I'll click and just drag to move that teapot out of the way for now. Click on the circle and we'll make that circle bigger. And now we'll start covering some other more advanced topics. I'm going to click on the teapot again and I'm going to add a modifier to it. Now what is a modifier? A modifier is something that can change the object. One of the ways that we can change the object is by deforming it in various ways. And you can investigate these. I'm going to just click on the bend for now just to show you. I'll add a bend modifier. So when you click on this, you have to actually click on the modifier. And now what we can do you can start to see it. it will bend the object. You can really see it here. And so this is a way to bend stuff. But that's not really what I wanted to show you. I just kind of got there on my way to showing you the real thing with respect to these circles. The kind of modifier where we can use the circle is called a constraint. I'll click on the teapot and say that I want to add a constraint. Constraint means that we're constraining, we're, we're holding somehow the, uh, the motion of the object that we've added this constraint to. And the particular constraint that I'm going to show you is called curve align, where we want to align this teapot to a curve. If I click on the modifier that I added, one of the things that you'll see down here is source curve. Now we have a very simple scene. It just has this teapot and a curve in it. So I'm just going to select the only curve we have and now I'll call your attention to this position on the curve. As I move this upward and downward one of the things that you'll see is that I'm moving the teapot around the curve. There's something else that we could do. If you take a little, little further downward, you see this adjust orientation. If I click on this, then not only does it change the position of the teapot, but it will also control its orientation as well. So that's pretty cool. So we can take a simple circle and we can use it to control the path of an object. Now I remember a little earlier when I was showing you and telling you that uh, sometimes it's handy to have an object that you're using but not really visible on the laser. In this case we're, we're seeing that curve out there on the laser. Maybe we don't want to do that. If we uncheck this thing here, visible in renderer, then it, we can use this only as the path and not as a visible element on the laser display. So how do you control this? How do you create an animation out of this? Well, remember, pretty much everything in Beyond 3D can be animated. See that little circle there? So if I set this back to zero, at time number one, if I right click on this and say add keyframe, and then move to frame 100, and, I'm, and this is in percentage, so 100% on the curve means it's all the way around there. 
If I right click and say add a keyframe there, so now we have two keyframes, one there and one there. Well, as time runs, as the time changes, you can see that I'm making the teapot follow the path on that curve. And just like we did before, we can come click on the teapot come over here into basic and say I want you to start red and I want you to end blue oops have to key it add a keyframe there in the color and come over here change the color add a keyframe here so now we have the teapot changing color and following that path all at the same time Render that out in frames. Send it to Beyond 3D. Minimize. And there's our animation. And remember what I was saying. Disable the laser output in Beyond 3D. If you minimize it, otherwise you'll get double the laser. That's what's happening on the laser right now. I have the Beyond, the normal Beyond Q generating this animation. I have Beyond 3D that's still outputting that teapot up there. Have to remember to turn off that laser output when you're done. So let's kind of continue this and have a little bit more fun with it. What I'll do is come over here to this circle curve, select delete, show some of the other curves. Specifically, I'll come over here to curve, and this next one over is called an n-gon. Well, what's an n-gon? You might have heard of a polygon. Well, that's really what an n-gon is. It's a polygon that's very versatile where you can control the polyness of it. Uh, for example, if you want to control, create a pentagon, that's a five-sided gon. If you want to create a hexagon, it has six sides. If you want to create an octagon, that's eight sides. So this really allows you to control how many sides the polygon has automatically like that. So let's say we get we create this hexagon here. I'll come over here to the scale tool and make that bigger. And now what I'll do is I'll take my little curve align tool here and say the source curve is this n-gon. We still have this these keyframes from the frame slider. And now what you'll see is that it follows the position of this hexagon just as it did with the circle. So these n-gons are pretty cool and you can use these as paths just as we're doing here. And it's not only that but what you could do once again I'll have a file new enable laser output come over here to curve I'll add this kind of a square resize that bigger I'll add another n-gon and let's say, remember, everything in Beyond 3D can be animated. So let's say at the starting time, I want the small one to have 12 sides, add a keyframe, and the big one to have four sides, add a keyframe. And then as time runs, we want the big one to really increase, add a keyframe, while the small one is decreasing. Add a keyframe. So as time runs, both of these n-gons are animating. We can animate the color and you know, perhaps make the big one not quite so big. So we can create kind of abstracts this way. It doesn't have to be 3D. We can stack them up vertically and do different things like that. Just kind of giving you some ideas here of what could be done. Another curve that's pretty fun is the spiral curve here. We'll just click on this and I'll show you some basic parameters of it. Here's the spiral. Here's the number of turns that the spiral makes. And you can animate this, remember. So we could start off with just one turn, add a keyframe here, and as time goes on, we can add curves to that right click add a keyframes so we can make this animated and the neat thing about it is I'll take off that animation maybe we'll make this um, 
have this many. 11, so now it's not animated, but what we're going to do is we'll make this a path. We'll take a cube, resize that cube, make it small, add, remember, it's curve align. Click on the curve align, choose the curve, and now what we can do is we can make the cube follow the path of the spiral, just like we did before. We say at time zero, it's at position zero, right click, add keyframe, and at time 100, it is at position 100, add keyframe, and we press play, and you can see that this is following the path of that. It looks a little jerky here, and as I render the frames on the laser, you'll see it seems kind of slow. That's because the video capture software I'm doing this tutorial with is really taking a lot of the processor's horsepower. Normally when you click these buttons, this stuff just zips right through. So once again, we'll generate the frames. Send it to beyond. And there's our animation. Show you a little bit more about the curves. One of the curves is the text. So if you just want to do some simple text, you just add some text in there just with this 2D. We also have 3D text over here, but I'll just show you the 2D text. Come over here, enter the text you want, choose the font. that and the rest is just just like normal you know you can move it around resize it if we want to create an animation for example scrolling text what we might do is come over here to position maybe zoom in up up on it a bit come over to position pan this off and remember transform controls the position and rotation and size. So at time zero, I will right click and add a keyframe there. We'll move over to here, move this position like that. I can continue to move it off the screen like this. Right click, add keyframe. So now we can create scrolling text and it can animate the color and bend it and do all kinds of other fancy stuff as you've seen so far. And as usual, you would just render and then send it to beyond. So the last type of curve that I'm going to show you, and then we'll put this whole thing together, is the kind of curve that you could draw. It's a, here it's called an empty curve, but really it's because it doesn't have any predefined shape it is a shape that you create yourself. When you click on that, you'll notice that this button all of a sudden becomes active. And it says, add a point. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the top view here and just start clicking. And what you'll see is that you can create your own curve. When you're in the curve mode, this modeling toolbar all of a sudden becomes active. I'm not going to cover all of the things that this does in this particular basic tutorial, but I will cover a few things. I'll go ahead and enable laser output. Uh -huh. So while you're creating the curve, you can't really see it on the laser. To see it on the laser, you'd have to click off of it. So now it kind of cre creates turns it into an object which can then be scanned on the laser. If I click on this again, this button up here will, will create either a closed curve, as you can see it all of a sudden closed it, or an open curve. That's that button there. And these plus and minus 
really control the smoothness of the curve. You can see how many little in-between points are added to this automatically like that. So this is really some of the things, ways in which you can control the curve and you can explore some of these other buttons later. So now we have our own created curve just as we did before we can take an object such as this teapot click on the teapot add a curve align modifier click on the curve align select the only curve that's in our scene add orientation and now we can have this teapot follow our hand-drawn curve 